Today's show is pre recorded. Like a million bucks, but the things in its cup. Mm-hmm. Y'all tell me who could it be for Steve Harvey? Oh, yeah. Everybody out there listening to me. Mm-hmm. Put your hands together for Steve Harvey. Put your hands together. Oh, 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 everybody y'all listening to the voice come on dig me now one and only steve harvey Mm, got a radio show keep saying it can't stop man oh man oh man what a journey it has been i thank god for every single step of the way i learned to thank him for the bad times too because it taught me something all the bad times all the failures they became valuable experiences in my life every time i failed i learned a little bit more about getting up Every time I was told no, it moved me one step closer to yes. It made me stronger. It toughened my skin. It made me learn how to deal with haters. It made me learn how to deal with people who who don't have your best interests at heart. Man, ain't y'all all all out there feeling me on this one right here. It teaches you who is who in your life. It shows you who you can depend on and who you can't. And at the end of the day, what it's taught me most of, all my hardships in my life, and it's really about me and God. That is the one factor that has been never changed in my life. God has always been the same for me and for you and for all of us. His word is true. It don't waver. It don't shake. You can shape it, readjust it if you want to. It is really the way it's written. It really is. You have your version of it if you want to, but if you just read it the way it is, it's real clear. Ain't no loopholes in it. Every time you jump through a loophole, there's something over there written that that counters that. So here's what I want to get to today. Listen to me. You got it within you. Oh, it's there. Just use it. Listen to me close. You got it within you. Oh, it's there. Just use it. If you hear me clearly, I'm really finna show you something this morning. You got it within you. Oh, it's there. Just use it. Steve, what you talking about? See, here's what's wrong with a lot of people. Here's what's stopping so many people. You keep looking. We keep looking for others to save us. We keep looking for someone else to rescue us. We always looking for some group of people or somebody to accept us. We keep looking for someone else's approval. We always looking for some group or somebody to deliver us. Somebody, some group of people to give us credibility. Somebody or some group of people who says we matter. We spend so much time right there. And when the Calvary don't come over the hill, when there ain't no saving and ain't no deliverance and ain't, you don't get accepted and, 
And and don't nobody really come to save you. And don't nobody vouching for you and giving you credibility. It throw you into something. Now you into this little state of, man, I don't know what I'm going to do. Oh, you got it within you. Oh, it's there. Just use it. You want to know what the real deal is, y'all? It's you and God, and it's the God in you. Man, I wish I could explain this right to you today. I want you to feel me on this right here. When you shake everything out the way, get rid of all your expectations of people, the relationship you thought was going to last forever that didn't make it, the child that you wanted to be this that turned out to be that, your friend you thought was your friend that stabbed you in the back, you found out they wasn't, the job you thought was going to keep you and you'd retire on, they done closed down, gave you a pink slip. All of this, man, the, the promise that somebody told you they was going to loan you this money, and on loan day, they say they ain't got it. Oh, man, oh, man, oh, man. This money you thought was going to come through on this check, the check ain't there. Oh, man, how many disappointments in life can you get? You thought you had enough credit hours to graduate. You found out two weeks before you didn't, you can't graduate. Oh, listen, man, what's going to happen? Man, look at the disappointment in my life right now. But let me explain something to you. When you get rid of all of that, guess what you really got? You got God. That's the whole enchilada, baby. That's the ball of wax. That's the monkeys in the barrel. That's the bag of chips. Listen to me. If you got God, do you understand that that's sufficient? That that's all you need? Can you feel me now? You and God and the God in you is really what you need. Stop looking for all these outside sources for approval, to gain acceptance, to get credibility, somebody to save you, the Calvary coming over the hill. Why won't they recognize me? Why won't they give me closure? Why they fire me? Why they foreclosing on my house? Don't they know I'm laid off? When you get through with all of that whining, it's going to come down to you and God and the God in you. If God created man in his own image, God is a part of you. There is a piece of you that's godly. I don't care who you are. I don't care what mistake you made. The murderer that's sitting in jail today because of a moment in his life that he's now paying for has God in him. The biggest criminal, when he get through criminalizing or whatever you want to call it, he's sitting there by himself. There is a piece of God in him that lets him know this ain't the way. This wrong. You can love this money if you want to, but you out of line and you gonna pay. At the end of the day, when I get through on this microphone, on this TV, all these articles, when I get through with all of that, you know what it come down to? Because see, it ain't always been this way for me. You know, I've been trying to get here, trying to get there. Listen to me. It's been me and God. And it's been the God in me. So when I woke up a few years back and I realized that's really what it was, it changed my whole life. It changed my whole life. Your whole life can get changed when you realize that it's really you and God and the God in you. Really? Man, people disappoint you. You argue with people. You fall out with people. You break up with people. You divorce people. You got people who you thought was friends. All of a sudden, you find out they talking about, it's crazy out here. You be going, what's going on? What's really going on? But that's because, guess what? You got all yours banked on them. When you going to bank it on the one thing that you can count on? God's word ain't changed since we got here. It's solid. If you pray, believe, work hard, don't doubt, you'll get whatever you ask for. That's a fact. That ain't no rumor. There's people out here doing it every day. Now, if you ain't trying that, listen to me. You got it within you. Oh, it's there. You just got to use it. There is a weapon available to man called prayer. Use that. See, I look at my life, man, whenever I get a little shaky, I look back, oh, hey, man, I ain't really talked with him too much yesterday. Uh-oh, <laughs> tighten up. I'm just telling you real. You got a better answer? Oh, 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 I know what, oh, let, oh, my bad, Steve. No, nah, Steve, I ain't winning because they ain't give me the loan. Oh, no, nah, Steve, I ain't winning because she left me. He left me. I ain't winning, Steve, because I got stuck with these kids. I got a divorce. They fired me. I, they foreclosed on my home. That's why I ain't winning. You ain't winning because you ain't praying. You got to pray and believe and work. That's the key. Come on, man. You got it within you. Oh, it's there. You just got to use it. It's just you and God, and it's the God in you. And what y'all going to do about that?
You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. One, two, one, two, three, four. I got it. Mm. Uh, look at here. I got it. What you talking about? I got it. Wait a minute. Look at here. I got it. Go ahead now. One more time. I said I got it. I wrote this song by myself. I got it. Didn't need nobody to help. I got it. Hey, did it by myself. I got it. Everything don't rhyme. I got it. Might miss it next time. I got it. Good it is on your mind. I got it. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. I got it. That's a hit right there. Thank you all for joining us this morning, everybody. Rocco Wallace just wanted to stop me in and do the latest Whoa. hit that he wrote. I got it. I wrote that by myself. And that way it can't be no more uh, distribution rights or publishing clears and all this here. I got it. Remember where you heard it from. Go ahead, Steve. Take it away. That a little new hit. Be looking for it on Apple. You can look for it on uh, 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 Spotify. You can look for it on uh, Pan- Pandorinium. You can look for it on uh, all, 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 all the streaming devices and everything. Uh, Bur- Blackberry. It's uh, going to be on everything. It's going to be on, be on T-Mobile. It's going to be on uh, all you can get it down at Kmart. You can buy it right next to the track phone. Go call her. So, Roscoe, we could say Alexa, play I Got It. You say it's going to be on Alexa. (laughs) It's going to be on on, on, on Siri. It's going to be on all of Siri. Siri. (laughs) It's going to be on her, too. It's going to be on everything. I'm I'm Roscoe Wallace. In case y'all tuning in this morning, um, um, I'm I'm Roscoe Wallace. I'm the greatest R&B songwriter, producer, singer of all time. The greatest lounge singer ever born create a motion music. And I just want to stop in and say good morning to you. Go ahead, Junior. Uh, Roscoe, what's going on with the case? <laughs> Remember you was in the, the lawsuit? How's that going? You know, the, the, the case took a horrible turn <laughs> over the holiday. <laughs> they all do. <laughs> what happened? It took a horrible turn. <laughs> what, what judge, what happened? Well, you know, my yeah. money got tight. I was fighting it as oh, long uh, as I could, and then they gave money. me a uh, they gave me a public defender. Oh, oh this oh, white wow. man ain't no none of the hit. <laughs> you had a terrible lawyer. I was just looking upside his head. I smell a hundred hair. <laughs> asking me questions like you know, talking about, talking about some who is uh. Ascension. Uh, uh, oh, Maxwell. Maxwell. Don't ask me who the hell is Maxwell. <laughs> Talking about he thought it was coffee. I said, you don't get your ass about here. So I was in here. <laughs> he thought Maxwell was coffee. We had all kind of problems communication. So when in the so court, you had to represent yourself. Well, yeah. we went in the court. We got in the argument. The court. And uh, um, I slapped him in front of the judge, and the judge threw <laughs> me and the whole case out. I backhanded his ass right up. <laughs> We gotta go, Roscoe. This story hey, right really here is great. Show this morning, y'all. Think you're gonna stop out? I'll let you. Thank I you, got Roscoe. it. Coming up in 32 minutes after the hour, nephew Tommy's run that prank back right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, it's time to get your morning started again with Run That Prank Back and the Nephew. What you got, Nev? I want my money back. Cat dog, if you would, please. Hello? I need to speak to, to uh, Sister Felicia. I have... Okay, who is this? This right here is Glenn, all right? This is Glenn. Okay, I need to talk... This is Brother Glenn. Can I speak to F- Sister Felicia? But I have some please. Okay, sir. Uh, how did you get my number? I got your number from one of the deacons at the church. Okay, what deacon was that? I don't even know the deacon name. I'm out. Uh, listen, what I'm trying to ask you, I'm trying to ask you, can you uh, reimburse me for some money that I put in church on Sunday? Okay, well, can you just calm down just a little, please, sir? I'm, 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 look, are you the financial person at the church? Yes, I am. So what can I do for you? I'm trying to get my money back that I put in church on Sunday. I put $100 in church on Sunday, and I'm trying to get my $100 back. Okay, well, did you not give from your heart? I gave from my heart what I thought was going to happen, but it didn't happen. Okay, um, help, help me help you. What you mean, what didn't happen? What didn't happen, sir? 
Okay, Pastor wasn't there. Pastor was not there on Sunday, and y'all had this uh, guest per, uh, minister come in who I I didn't like him at all. But the 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 doggone uh, the offering was before he even got up to preach. So I didn't already gave my offering, which was a hundred dollars, and then I didn't even know Pastor wasn't there. You know what I'm saying? So here I am giving a hundred dollars. I'm thinking I know I'm gonna get the word when Pastor there. But y'all put this dude up. He coming from don't nobody come from the Book of Ruth no more. He from he was at Ruth Leviticus. He was all over the place. I I want to get my hundred dollars back. I ain't giving to that. Sir, do you not read the bulletin? I mean, how often do you even come to church? I come to church often. I mean, what what, what does got to do with anything? Well, if you would come a little often and read the bulletin, so you would have known that Pastor took a vacation. It, he took a vacation, so so everybody knew he wasn't gonna be there. Yes, sir. The regulars, the people that come regularly to church, they know that, sir. Okay, well I ain't know that, so I need I need to get I need to get my money back. Okay, what I need you to do though is calm down. Oh, I'm, 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 I'm calm. I'm just trying to say I want to get my hundred dollars. I'm not giving that sermon I got on Sunday. I'm not giving no hundred dollars for that. Well, sir, I cannot give you a hundred dollars back. Okay, we don't do no refund checks. I can't do that. Okay, I have to wait till Pastor get back in because two people have to sign the checks. I can't even do that for you, sir. Matter of fact, I'm not even at work right now. Okay, so how am I going to get my $100 back? Okay, sir, why don't you just call the church on tomorrow and then we can go from there, okay? I'm not calling. I'm not calling the church tomorrow. I tell you what, you know what? You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to come up there tomorrow and you're going to give me my $100. Either it's in a check or it's in cash. But you, Mr. Uh, uh, Sister Felicia Patterson, you're going to give me my damn money. Hey, hey, hey. Did you just cuss me? Say what? Sir, did you just cuss me? I just told you that come tomorrow, I'm coming up there to get my damn $100. Whether it's in a check or whether it's in cash. I don't care what it's in. Let me tell you something, sir. You ain't get nothing from us. How dare you call here and cuss me, asking for some money back. You don't matter. You're giving your money from your heart. It doesn't matter who up there preaching the word of God. You give because you love God. But have you ever thought to me like this? I'll strip you naked. You, you, you know what? You better be glad this ain't 20 years ago because I'd have cussed you from A to Z. But thank God that he saved me because you know what? I ain't going to cuss you. But I tell you what I will do, young man. Whenever I see you, what you say your name is again? What's your name I'm, is? I'm Brother Glenn. Brother Glenn, when I see you, I'm going to give you the rap for the fellowship. Do you hear me? Do you Come on, say something. Because that's how you treat God's people. You have been talking to me ignorant since I picked up the phone. You ain't say, hi, ma'am. How you doing, ma'am? Can you help me, ma'am? No, you just start cussing and hollering at me. You don't talk to people like that. You don't even sound like a Christian. Christian don't do that. Do you hear me, boy? Now, you want something from people, you ask. That's what the word says. You have not because you ask not. You don't call here hollering at me. Do you hear me? I, I, you, I, 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 I hear you. Come call here cussing at me. Oh, oh Lord, help me. Can, 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 can I, Sister Felicia, can I Young say man, I mean, I just want to say something else to you, you if you don't mind. Can I say something? You can't say nothing to me. But do you know what you need to do? Go get you some manners. Yes, 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 ma'am. But I, I, but it's one more thing I just wanted to say no, to you. Ain't no one more thing. Ain't no one more thing. Uh, uh, okay, but I just, I just wanted to tell you this, Sister Felicia. I wanted tell to tell you. Tell me what? You, I, I told you. You ain't got uh, nothing to tell me. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. But I want to say this though. This is nephew Tommy from the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Your girlfriend, Sister Doris, got me to prank phone call you. Oh, my God. <laughs> Woo. I am going to get Doris. <laughs> oh, yes, I am. Tommy, yes, uh, Hello? is Steve in there with you? No, no, ma'am. No, ma'am. Steve is not in here with me. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to need to have a private moment with Sister Doris. <laughs> yeah, it's got to be private. Can't nobody hear what I got to share with her. Yeah, it's going to just be me, her, and the Lord. Sister Felicia. Woo. She told me, she said, my girlfriend is blessed, highly favored, saved. And she said, I want you to see if you can push her butt. So I didn't, Sister so Felicia, you, you, you wrote it out. I'm going to tell you. <sighs> but, but, but you, let me ask you something, though. 20 years ago, you, 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 it would have been a little different. Oh, 20 years ago, <laughs> I'd have picked you up and dropped you back down. Looked at you and walked over you after I got through cussing you out. But that was 20 years ago. Ooh, thank the Lord for delivering. Ooh. Oh, oh man. Lord, my legs still shaking. Oh, Lord.
Let me ask you something, Sister Felicia. I got to ask you, what is the baddest, and I mean the baddest, radio show in the land? Oh, I must say the Steve Harvey Morning Show. (laughs) 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 Woo, yeah, you you got me, you got me. Oh, loud, you got me. (laughs) (laughs) World's greatest stupidity is nephew Tommy. All right? World's greatest. Facts. All right. World's greatest. All right. Only facts. Only. <laughs> oh, there's there's a lot that wanna wanna stand up to and wanna contest. <laughs> wait, wait, what did you say, close. Junior? I love that. World's greatest. He's talking about world's greatest stupidity. Only, only greatest <laughs> stupidity. <laughs> Anyone? No group of y'all. The, I'm the world's greatest. <laughs> By far. Thank you, nephew. <laughs> <laughs> Coming up next, ask the CLO Chief Love Officer Steve Harvey in the building for your love questions right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Coming up at the top of the hour in entertainment news, 50 Cent asked Oprah and Tyler to apologize to Monique because uh, he's on a mission to boost her career. Mm-hmm. Oh, mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yep, yep, yep. I would love to see her back for one. Uh Uh-huh. Also, in trending entertainment news, (laughs) what? Jussie Smollett is released from jail. He just got in there. Wait a minute. We're going to talk about all of these stories at the top of the hour. But right now, it is time to Ask the CLO. Chief Love Officer Steve Harvey. Christy in Southfield says, my boyfriend and I broke up because he doesn't understand that he can't have a female best friend. I may be scared or scarred, I should say, because I slept with a longtime friend of mine and that made me a firm believer that men and women can't be that close without crossing the line. Did I do the right thing or am I tripping? Well, I've said it, uh, hundred times on this many, show. Many, many times. Many, I, many I, times. I, 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 don't, I don't see the benefit of it. I, I don't know how it how it's going to work. I've seen it cause way more problems than I have be a benefit. Mm-hmm. Now, you can say you can do it, but I'm going to tell you right now. If the man finds the woman attractive, he ain't going to be able to stay in that lane. Mm-mm. He can't stay in that lane. We're guys. No. We're guys. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We can't get stuck on the elevator together. I don't know. Nothing. I'm, if, Ten minutes. It's Highland. <laughs> Can't have a drink Elevated. together. <laughs> Can't have going? no serious talks about your love life. None of that. Nah. <laughs> Can't hold you and comfort you. None of that. Mm-hmm. That's what friends do. We but can't your get... friend. You're my friend. That's, That's what, what you think. Do. That's what you think. That's what we want you to think. <laughs> yeah. Now uh-huh. slip up and see what we be. You've never been my friend all along. Is what you're saying. Ever. It's going to be some sexy consoling. I'm just telling you. It's going to be some sexy consoling. You talking about me and you, Shirley? No, no, no. I'm just talking about men and women in general. No. uh... So you've never been my friend. My my best friend can never Don't nobody like you like that. Don't nobody friend you like that. Stop all that. Mm. Mm. Just be your damn friend. We're uh, we're friends on this show. Yeah, why why don't men like to be in the friend zone? You married. Your ego? Right. So you married? That's different. You ain't married. Watch this. (laughs) 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 Hell. (laughs) (laughs) Moving on. Moving on. All right, Christy. Uh, Be up in Dubai looking over a balcony with somebody behind you. (laughs) So to Christy, she's not tripping. She's right. He cannot have a female best friend. I'm telling you. Okay. Moving on to Coda in Atlanta. Coda says, I'm a newlywed and my husband is a basketball coach for a community team. He was supposed to be at a game on the other side of town last Saturday, but I walked up on him at a restaurant with some of his players. Why couldn't he call to tell me he was done early and ask me to join them for dinner? Why? Because it's the basketball team meeting. Yeah. Dinner. Yeah. What? Come you might want to tell wife, you, know, you wasn't at the game. What you want to hmm. be at the celebration? you mad at him for? He was this with his true. players at a restaurant. That's what mm. coaches do. It's part of the team. Coda, you tripping. He, you can't go everywhere. Let him have a lane. You have a lane. Oh, my God. He don't want you down at the gym. Be quiet, Shirley. <laughs> Shirley, you don't see this, though? 
You don't see this? I'm just saying. I mean, I get that, you know, he wants to hang out with the players, but he could have just called her and said, you know, whatever, because she was expecting him to be someplace else. That's well, all. he wasn't. Where's your consideration? Well, you rolled up on him and you found out what he was really doing. What's the big deal? And he wasn't doing nothing was wrong. Nothing. Lying. He, he wasn't yeah, he lying. Called he called was with, her. For what? Just he to call tell her. her. He, he could have call called her. her. When y'all but shopping. He, 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 he with the boys. Yeah. What? Shopping is different, Junior. No, when y'all no, shopping, y'all different. don't ask for consideration to buy nothing. Y'all just right. buy it. Y'all don't call us and tell us. we work every day. He I working. I ask you, can I Next question, you? Shirley. Got no time <laughs> for y'all. Nobody agreeing Ooh. on this one. Uh-uh, uh-uh. No. All right, Tish in Silver Spring says, I met this cute guy at a house party, and we exchanged numbers, and he walked me to my car. While we were walking, he passed gas loudly, and he said he couldn't wait to get that out. I was horrified. Wow. Horrified. Wow. But he acted like it was normal. He's called me since then, but I haven't called him back. Should I go out with him? Uh-uh. It's, it's way more than that where that comes from. That's, that's on the first initial date. He ain't had no problem with that. Girl, he got so much stuff he can't wait to do. <laughs> Ooh, that's a bit much. That's too common. That's just to the car. Yeah. Man. Yeah. You get up in that house, you ain't going to believe what's up in there. <laughs> Girl, no, that, boy, that boy on that D-Herbs today, boy. Yeah. <laughs> if that's his putting his best foot forward, if that's his best first impression, you ain't mm-hmm. in for a rude awakening, lady. Yeah. Head the other way. Uh-uh. I, how, how do you? How are you walking with a woman and pass gas loudly? And you say, "I couldn't wait to get that out." Like he we cool to, like that yeah, though. Like, like yeah. we cool. He didn't even try to what? play it off or nothing. Uh-huh. He said, "What was that?" I can't even do that in front of my partner. <laughs> my dudes ain't for dog. Yeah, your yeah, friends. Man. Yeah, come on. It's, it's a respect oh, thing, oh, man. Oh, oh, your yeah. friends. Oh. He didn't even do it. Say, get down. They shooting. He ain't say nothing. <laughs> Uh, come on, Shirley. <laughs> so he's wow. nasty. All right. Maurice and Juliet says, I'm 25. I'm dating a beautiful girl that is very self-centered. It's all about her all the time, even during sex. If she is done, then we're done. And I've had many sleepless nights because she won't allow me to finish. I'm not very experienced in this area. So help me out. Is this normal for a woman to control no. this? No, dog. Get out now. <laughs> Yeah. Exit. She finishing and you ain't right. and then that's just it. Yeah. Nah, it go the nah, other we, way. We homie. racing to it. We nah, racing. dog. It normally go the other way. If it's going this way right here, you in for a life of disappointment. <laughs> I'ma tell you right now, this is my strong suggestion to you. Because you twenty five and all y'all dating. Mm-hmm. I She's strongly beautiful. suggest I got it. She beautiful, got all that. Mm-hmm. I recommend this highly. That you what? get yourself a side chick. <laughs> That's what I recommend. What? I highly recommend what? this. She gonna let you finish. Boy, <laughs> boy, and tell her what your problem is. And watch the show. <laughs> boy, you ain't gonna be able to tell how many times you gonna get to finish. Get you a side chick. I've never recommended that before. But get you, you never a have. side chick. You get to finish. <laughs> Just because she's self-centered and, you know, she she likes to move on. I've had them for less reasons than that, Shirley. So, yes. <laughs> Yo, 21? Boy? Oh, you were 21. What? Yeah, he's young. <laughs> Steve, Steve, can we talk? What? Talk. <laughs> <laughs> I got you. He's going to hang in there with her because she's beautiful. All right. Thank you, CLO. Coming up next, we'll have some entertainment news at the top of the hour right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Okay, well, 50 Cent says he's on a mission to boost Monique's career. As we told you, Monique, of course, has accused Oprah. She's accused Tyler and Lee Daniels, the director, of blackmailing her, blackballing her, I should say, not blackmailing. Those are two different things. Blackballing her in Hollywood. Now 50 Cent thinks it's time to let bygones be bygones. He wants to let things go, Tommy. 50 says, I'm sure... I ain't got got no (laughs) grudges. You know, you don't... You know how you don't like to let things go. 
Monique ain't done nothing to me. <laughs> uh-uh, we love Monique. I'm sure <laughs> Oprah and Tyler would not want to continue to allow their influence to damage Monique's career. And this has gone on too far, okay, for far too long. Uh, 50 wrote in the caption of, of a video post explaining the situation. He says, so now would be a great time to apologize because uh, I'm going to put her back on. After the post, 50 spoke with Tyler and... Um, Post in an update, Tyler said he would never tell anyone not to hire Monique, and he is happy that he decided to work with her. He also said that Tyler couldn't speak for Oprah, but he is sure Oprah is fine with Monique and has even brought her up for things Monique has no idea about. Tyler went on to say, I'm so happy for Mo right now, and uh, we're happy too. That's what is, that's what's going on. She's getting back on. That's good, yeah. though. That's yeah, good. Let's move on. Yeah, life yeah. is short. All right, 50, all right, Mo? Life is short. Yeah. Hey, I'm so I saw 50. I went to a Houston Rockets game versus Phoenix last uh-huh. night. And, you know, 50 lives in Houston. So right. 50 was sitting courtside, and the uh-huh. announcer went over to him and said, hey, I got something for you. So the announcer for the game had him look up at the mascot. You know how they have the uh, – there's a bear that's a mascot for the Rockets. He was mm-hmm. muscular. He had on a tank top, was hanging <laughs> upside down from the Rockets. Ah, uh, you lying. Like, <laughs> no, you lying. Like 50 did. I like the Super Bowl. The show for the, and they <laughs> played in the club, and the mascot was hanging upside down. <laughs> Redid the whole half Go, Shawty. Show. It's your birthday. It's your birthday, <laughs> man. Everybody was cracking up the players. Chris lying. Paul. Jalen Green. It was funny. It was really, really that, funny. That sounds funny. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So 50 is All right, 50. Yeah. He said he, he was laughing too. Welcome yeah. to Houston, 50. Yeah. <laughs> Loving the show. Uh, Power the Force with Tommy. I love yeah. it. I love Clutch it. I love it. up in the raft. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Do your so thing, funny. 50. Yeah. In other entertainment news, Jesse Smollett. <laughs> Is out. Free. Uh, is out. Free. A judge found that because Jesse's uh, offenses were nonviolent, the court would allow him to be released on a $150,000 individual bond during his appeal. Now, under the terms of the uh, one uh, I bond, he won't have to actually pay unless he skips his court, court date. So that's another good thing for Jesse. Naturally, uh, special prosecutor Dan Webb opposed Jesse's release uh, the way he sees it. There was no emergency that warrants the extraordinary relief of staying the sentence. He went on to say that Jesse didn't provide any real proof that he was in real danger and used a uh, hmm, curse, cursory, woefully undeveloped argument. Okay, that's what is Jesse that? Did. All of his What's arguments cursory? were underdeveloped. I don't know. We would have to ask well, whatever it was, whatever it was, he didn't like his arguments and saying they weren't enough to keep him out of jail, uh, to or or to sway the court. In the state's response to the motion for relief, either way, Jussie Smollett is free. All right. All so, right. how was your week, Jussie? When somebody asked him that, well, I was in jail. I was out of jail. I was That's in, good, and I was though. out. I'm- <laughs> Yeah, because I, I thought the the punishment did not fit the crime. It was way too much. So good for him. Yeah. I, I hope it's he's been too much attention though. on this period to me. Yeah. Way and I, I hope he's learned something so. right through this whole ordeal. You know, don't yeah. lie on, you know, come on, Justy, get it together. We're glad you're out of jail, but learn Oh, we're glad something. you're out. Yeah. yeah. Well, why you say well, it's too much experience. attention, Tommy? Why you say it's that? just too much? It's, it's it's so many crimes going on in the country. This is this is really minor compared to everything else that's going on. How many more crimes we got going on in this country that that Ouch. are just well, I tell you right warrant now. more attention yeah. than this? Yeah. Yeah. In this country, out of this country, it's a lot exactly. going on in the world. Yep, I agree with you. This ain't hard. Mandela. What is this? What is this? What is this? We ain't in here for no see. Civil Rights Act. Huh. Come yeah. on, man. Free each other. We ain't here about a foot-long sandwich and what else? What, some lies? A lines. noose. <laughs> but, yeah. A MAGA hat. If, you, if, you, if the but time what? doesn't fit the crime and he's free, then that's good news. I but got no problem. I do, I do understand that there's also other men, other people, women in jail that 
are innocent yeah. that didn't get right. the attention, the media attention that Jesse got. Yeah, and they're yeah. still behind yeah. bars. We got hashtags. You know. Hashtags free Jesse. Yes. Yeah, yes. He, he wasn't marching with down to the sandwich well. shop. He wasn't doing no. that. He wasn't marching. Yeah. No, and, and what I don't like about it is that there are people that are victims of racial crimes and all that stuff, you know, Hate crime. every yeah. single day, every yeah. single day. And then he used this particular situation to his advantage. That's what I don't like. It still didn't deserve the kind, amount of time he got, but I don't like that. that he yeah, he didn't that. kill I nobody. I don't, yeah. I don't like that. Not yeah. at all. I, yeah. And that's yeah. why I say, yeah. yeah. I hope he learned something from this experience. Now get somewhere and sit down and try to revive your career, Jesse. Mm-hmm. And what did this stem, this stem from what? We all think that this stem. The attention <laughs> that he was trying to get why he staged it in the first place. Is that what yeah. you mean? Yeah. Yeah. On because Empire. Empire and being let Contract. go off the of Empire. All of that. Yeah. Negotiations. Yeah. 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 All right. Coming up next, we do not have to turn our clocks back. What? No more daylight savings time? <laughs> We'll talk about it right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Well, guys, some good news. Uh, Congress unanimously passed the Sunshine Protection Act. Uh, What is the Sunshine Protection Act? Well, it is a measure that would make daylight savings time permanent across the U.S. next year. Yes, uh, thank you. Yes, right, yes. And this would ensure Americans uh, would no longer have to change their clocks twice a year. But, 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 the bill still needs the approval from the House and the signature of President Joe Biden better, to become a law. I know. Please yeah, sign this. Sign <laughs> this if he is want something to be you can do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no more switching clocks, more daylight hours, which is what we all love to spend yeah. outside after school, after work, more smiles. This is what we get. Um, with uh, permanent daylight savings time. This is Senator Ed Markey of Massachusetts saying this. He is the originator of the original co-sponsor of the legislation. So what do you prefer, guys? You prefer spring forward or fall back? You like, no, spring you know, forward. to sleep in? Spring or you, yeah. yeah, yeah, more daylight, yeah. yeah. So there's just No golf time. Well, you know, I was listening to the lady that was presenting the bill <laughs> on TV the other day, and she said, it just doesn't make sense for all of us to have to lose and entire hours of sleep and rest just to spring this clock forward. That's ridiculous. So many people have lost an hour of rest. <laughs> That's what? no reason. Yeah, we like really? it because it's fun. I'm just trying to get yeah. some more daylight. That's it. Yeah. It's one <laughs> damn hour. It's, oh, we up now. Hell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, Sit up oh I remember tomorrow. growing up in, yeah, in Chicago, it was like, Dark at four thirty. Dog, yeah. it got dark Man. at four thirty up there. I was concerned. Yes, yeah. four thirty, <laughs> especially in up the north. Afternoon, cause yeah. man, afternoon. it gets when that sun <laughs> leaves. That cold just come. It's wicked Ooh. up there. Man. It's dark and wicked. Yep. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Tired of my grandmother falling asleep on me every time it get dark. <laughs> <laughs> Can't hold no conversation or nothing. She's and then you know Joyce called and <laughs> right at four thirty. Four thirty. But it's early, but now, you, you know, think it's late because it's now, dark. You know, look, you're gonna have a natural <laughs> loss of sunlight every anyway, year because any, of the rotation uh, of the earth and, and all yeah, of that. Exactly. Mm-hmm. You're gonna all have a that, natural right. and I on top of it, it ain't make no damn sense. Dark at five thirty, six o'clock. Look. <laughs> Yes, cool. let's do it. It'll let's happen next go. year, so this is cool. Yeah, we've Funny been waiting for this. how Congress can come together on that. They can't vote on that Voting Rights Act. Ooh. I know. They, oh, yeah. The yeah. little things. The little things, yeah. Oh, they're going to vote that in, though. <laughs> yeah, you can, you can uh-huh. have your daytime, but this voting ass. <laughs> so, Junior, what's your grandmother say again? <laughs> and then, you know, George, that came by here and then. Four thirty-five. So <laughs> third. <laughs> All right, coming up in 34 minutes after the hour, we're going to check Steve's voicemail, 877-29-STEVE, right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Time now to check Steve's voicemail, and if you would like to leave Steve a voicemail, all you have to do is call 877-29-STEVE. You could hear, hear your message on the air with us. It's just that simple, okay? So, Steve, you ready? For our listeners, here we go. 
<laughs> this caller wants to uh, ask the CLO a question. What's going on, Steve Harvey? Uh, got a question for you. So um, kind of in the jam a little bit in my relationship. So I wanted to propose to my woman, but um, I went to another woman for advice. Yeah, no, probably not the best of the situation. So um, there was a little bit of, you know, flirting going back and forth between me and this lady. And uh, my woman accused me of having some type of relations with this lady. Um, I wanted to do it as a surprise and not tell her. But, you know, we moved on from the situation, but it seems like every now and then this topic comes back up. And I was wondering, how can you help me out? Thank you. Well, bro, as far as the subject coming back up every now and then, that's forever. Yeah. Oh, that's coming. That's, that's, we don't. We don't. You know your women. I love don't that you? about you. Steve. I don't have a real answer for you on that. That one is forever. Keep it will have come fun. up at some of the most inappropriate moments. But I will. I will tell you. Uh, every year on that day that it came up before. Uh, the elephant-minded women that they are will remember that exact day. Mm-hmm. If you had on a white shirt that day, every time you have yes. on a white shirt, yes, she'll Lord. bring it. Yeah. If one anybody has a name that starts with the same letter as the girl you went over to get advice <laughs> yes, from, yes. Yes. she'll Don't. bring it up. So the bringing it up, bruh, is going to be forever. I do think you should move on with the proposal because in your mind, it was a mistake you made and you found out that you didn't need anybody's advice on you because the love you have for her is unexplainable. And for anybody else to even try to understand it, it's just mind-blowing to you, and you've learned that your love is much deeper than a conversation with another female. And why even interject that into the relationship? And you will forever oh. hold your relationship as a two-handed circle from now on. Let the church say amen. Hey, amen. 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 But again. I did. That's the same thing you told Carolyn, though, but it's all right. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Uncle Steve, Uncle Steve just helped you out, brother. Don't pay no attention to the ladies because your problem is your lady. Come on, Shirley. Mm. Hello. Mm. <laughs> this caller appreciates you, Steve. Let's hear what they have to say. Hey, Steve. You know, I listen to you all the time. My name is Nikki. And you know what? I listen to you. You make me so, so much better, you know, because I have everything, everybody against me where I live at and my family and everything like that and just listening to you and your calm i just feel so i feel so good it's just like you just make my day you make my my day at my job when i'm driving in my car everything and i just listen to you thank you because when you say the spiritual things in the morning i listen to it i'm like wow this is the worst thing just said and it's just to be about me with uh haters um envy jealous and i'm a single woman i'm 53 years old and i live by myself and i love i love god i love god so much i get up in the morning i said god you said so mild thank you and just the evilness i get and i'm just so tired of it but i'll just say every time i hear you i said thank you steve and the crew there i love you steve keep up the good work bye-bye oh wow i have to give all that credit and honor to god almighty because god places things on me to say. I'm not always even responsible for saying it. I'm be honest with you. Mm-hmm. A lot mm-hmm. of times I don't know what to say and then I'll lower my head and ask God to give me something. So I have to give all that credit and honor to God. That that part you see of me, that good part, that's that's the part that I allow God to reside and 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 the holy spirit to take over for me so that's all god i thank you for recognizing that portion of the god in me and hopefully i'll have more of that to be shown i'm working on that though because there's a large percentage of me that's not really uh, all that (laughs) if you want to leave steve a message call his voicemail at 877-29-STEVE we just might play your message on the air coming up next it is a prank (laughs) phone call for today from the nephew right after this You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Coming up at the top of the hour, right about four minutes after, it's my strawberry letter for today. The subject, the backseat and the barbershop. Hmm, We'll get into that, find out what that's all about in just a little bit. But right now, it is the nephew and the prank phone call. What you got for us, Neff, today? 
As you know, last year. <laughs> you know that always kills me. Church bought me this glove. Yes. That I may have healing power. Which way is up? <laughs> Which way is up? Mm. I could do any movie. That's the one I want to do. That one right there. Let me play, let me play three people. Which way is up? Really, got really, it. Tommy. Got it. Preacher, <laughs> old time. man, and myself. Which way is up? I got it. We'll pack if you're listening to me. I can pull it off if you let me have it, baby. Which, which way is up? The remake by Netflix. Yes. All Good right, way. this right here. Buckle up and get ready, y'all. This right here is lunchtime date. Lunchtime uh-huh. date. Cat dog, if you would. Hello? Hey, I'm trying to speak to, uh, I'm trying to speak to Alan. Yeah, this is Alan. Who is this? Hey, Alan. Yo, this is Derek, man. Check this out, bro. Uh, you, you are Rachel's, uh, Rachel's husband, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's my baby. What's up? Something wrong? No, 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 no. I work, this, like I said, this is Derek, man. I work with your wife, Rachel. Right. You, you, so you a supervisor or something? I mean, you just, this about work or something? I mean, she doing a good job and everything. She ain't about no, to get no, fired. No, 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 no. Everything's straight, man. Ain't nothing wrong with the job. Everything's cool with the job. This, this right here, man, is, like, it, what I know this man, and, it, you know, it just seems like every single day, you know, while she's on her lunch break, uh-huh. it seems like, you know, you would call and and and, uh, and then block up the whole hour of her lunch break. And actually, you know, just be real, man, I'm just trying to come correct with you. It just seems like you just cut in on all the time that I have that I have with her. Well, you know what I'm well, saying? Well, whoa, 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 whoa. Hold, hold, hold up, homie. Hold up. Hold up, bro. Wait. You, what the f*** are you doing in at lunch with my lady, son. No, no, like I say, we, you know, we just we just spending time, you know, doing lunchtime, but it just seems so rude, you know, that... R- rude? Rude? Time. Rude? You, you, okay, first of all, that's my lady, okay? I can call her whenever the f- I feel like calling her. That's I pay for that f- phone bill. I bought that iPhone 5. I could get to call her whenever I f- please, all right? Secondly, f- you ain't got no business being with a married woman alone at lunch. This ain't no date, f- Y'all supposed to be at work. No, no we are at work. We, co- we Like I say, we co-workers, you know? But it, it, it seemed like half the whole time I was sitting in front of her, you know, we're supposed to be having lunch together, and, and she's talking to you the whole time. Uh-uh, uh-uh. Okay, what, what, what's your name again, bro? My name's Derek. Derek, Derek, all right, Derek, you work at the same building now? Okay, you, you at work right now, huh? Yeah, I mean, yeah, I'm here at the job. I mean, y'all work in the same floor, because I'm finna come see you. You seem about to jump off way, way <laughs> different for you, <laughs> straight up. Okay, so, no, let, let me ask you something, man. What is the big deal... I'm just trying to. Okay, you act like you don't see her. You act like you don't see her when she get home. You know, so so why is it so important that you waste a whole hour of lunchtime holding her? It ain't wasted. I ain't, ain't wasting my. I'm talking to my lady. Okay, you understand that? Why don't you go out there and get? And then you ain't got to worry about sitting up in front of my lady. That's my wife. I walk down the aisle with that. We got kids. We got a house. We take care of this. She helped me hold it down. And this, you, you, you ain't. You know. It's like you and you don't ever want to come in and do but they got so I always want to come in and somebody else wife and why why don't you do this take 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 this advice and see what it works how it works for you go to the club, church library grocery store wherever the find your that and you get you a chick you date her for a minute you court her for a minute you romance her for a minute that's what real men do you know what I'm saying that's what I did that's how I got my my Rachel, that's the that's my heart. You trying to sit up there in front of lunch with her every day for the past year? <laughs> I tell you what, bro. It may not be today. It may not be tomorrow, but soon, soon you are gonna see me. Me and you gonna have none of this phone conversation. It's gonna be a face to face. Hey, hey you. dude, dude. All, all of, hey man. What? I ain't trying to come between y'all at all. No, all you know. Okay, like I'm saying, I'm not trying to come between y'all. I'm just saying it's every day you call it, man. What do you want? That's why supposed to talk to every guy day. That's what a real do. You don't know about that because you a you ain't no real. All you know about is trying to holler at some street. You don't know what it is to put in work like a real man do to actually hold down a home, pay the bills, everything, the family, the kids, and fixing the yards and fences and. You don't know nothing about that. All you know about is being a roach. Wife can't even go to work without like you trying to step to her and don't make no god sense. But that's okay. Like I promise you, I'm gonna be there. You're gonna see me, and I'm gonna see you. You know, I tell you what, this is how this gonna go. It may not be tonight, but it's definitely not gonna go past tomorrow. Between now and then, you are gonna see me, and I'm gonna see you. And I can't. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Say, say, what, you, what you say? 
disturb me. It's gonna, uh, I will come see your <laughs> by tomorrow, son. Me and you, Derek. That's your name, right, Derek? My, my, name, my, my, my name is Derek. Yes. I'm a <laughs> you gonna always want to be both smiley face in my wife's face. I'm gonna deal with Rachel <laughs> when I see her. You can please believe that. <laughs> please believe that. <laughs> Talk to her about her little friend at lunch and <laughs> like that. How, how <laughs> get my number anyway? My so I got your number out of Rachel's phone, but that's besides the point. What the man. about my phone, my Y'all ain't that cool. I don't think, I, I ain't never heard of no Darius before today. And all of a sudden, you calling me talking about you was at lunch every day with my wife and no, you. I don't. Ooh. No, it's, no, it's a friendly lunch date is what it is. Friendly, friendly. I know, I know, I know about you. how you is you friendly. I know about all that. You ain't fooling me. I know like you who prey on married women all the time because they like you. But that's. Like I said, it's going to change. I promise you. Okay, Doug, here's, here's what you don't know. What you don't know is, is, is Tommy Tommy be pushing up on him more than me. Who the f***? Tommy, Tommy, who the f***? Who the f***? Tommy, m***. Tommy is always pushing up on her. Ty, Tommy the one you need to be worried about. Who the f*** you Tommy? Who the, who the f***? Tommy, any Dog, dog, dog. Nephew Tommy, man, check this out. This is Nephew Tommy from the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Your wife, Rachel, got me to prank phone call you. Oh, <laughs> I can't believe y'all did this to me, man. Oh, man, I was going to come down and f*** for me. You all right, man? Man, I am now. <laughs> I was gonna, ooh, well, you don't also gonna burn that building down. You don't even know. <laughs> right. All right, Pete, Pete, Tommy, this, this is my prediction. Somebody gonna f you up. For real. <laughs> Y'all, you just you play too f much, man. Y'all tripping. Uh, hey, man, check it out. You got to tell me this, man. What is the baddest yeah. radio show in the land? Only the Steve Harvey Morning Show, man. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. Talk to me, man. <laughs> Talk to me, man. Stupid. Derek. What do you, I mean, when you're calling every day, man, what do you want, dog? What, what is do it? What do you want? You That's just seen wife. her before she left the house. What do you want, dog? That's my wife, son. <laughs> Derek. May not be today, but it definitely ain't going past tomorrow. That's right. I'm going to burn the whole building down on you. I'm on my I way. Can't. Uh, I'm sitting there trying to say. have lunch with your wife, and here you come call. What do you want? Yeah, he totally said it may not be today, but it definitely ain't going past tomorrow. What? Look at the watch. I got time today. So close. Gonna see me. So close. Yeah, I know guys like you sitting around trying to pray up on people's wives and stuff while they ain't around. I seen you. you all you Negroes need to get y'all still. So you know what? That's all right. That's all right. We, 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 we'll deal with it. Don't worry about it. We'll deal with it. Uh-huh. 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 He gonna get uh-huh. Crazy part about oh, you. Man. And he public, didn't. Though, and heard people say those exact words. Dog, <laughs> you gonna see me. Oh, you gonna see me. <laughs> Might not be. It ain't going to go past tomorrow. But yeah. you, you going to see me? Uh, Beaumont, you going to see me? You going to see me, Beaumont? Saturday night, you going to see me act a doggone fool Saturday night on that stage. Julie Rogers Theater, baby. Got a few tickets left. The nephew is coming to town. You going to see me? You going to hmm. see me? Everybody don't get to see stupid like this. You going to see me? We see it every day. Thank you, nephew. Coming up next, Strawberry Letter subject, the back seat and the barbershop. We'll get into it right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Time now for today's Strawberry Letter. And if you need advice on relationships, dating, work, sex, parenting, and more, please submit your Strawberry Letter to steveharveyfm.com and click Submit Strawberry Letter. We could be reading your letter. <laughs> Live on the air, just like we're going to read this one right here, right now. Could be yours. You never know. Buckle up and hold on tight. We got it for you. Here it is, the strawberry letter. Thank you, nephew. Subject, the back seat and the barbershop. Dear Stephen Shirley, I'm a married woman in my late 40s. I have a boyfriend that's five years younger than I am, and he's also married. He's a co-owner of a barbershop, and that's where we met. That's where I met him. We've been seeing each other for a few weeks and he's got long work hours. So we have to have sex whenever and wherever we can. The first time we were intimate, it was magical. 
I made an appointment to get my lock shampooed, and I had no idea it would be done by a big, handsome man with magical fingers. Wow. We were the only two in the barbershop, and he asked me to remove my turtleneck so it wouldn't get wet. I knew he was flirting because I'd never been asked to remove my shirt to get my hair washed. Uh, I did it, and I leaned back in the chair with my ample bosom spilling out of my black lace bra. He told me that he, he is all man, and my breasts were making it hard for him to work. He leaned against me while he shampooed my hair, and I could feel it pressed up on my arm. It was at eye level, so as he shampooed my hair, I did what I had to do. Since then, I've been going by his shop a few days a week. When there are other customers inside the barber shop, we go out to the back seat of his car. We're either in his barber shop or on the back seat. I would love to stretch out and thoroughly enjoy myself, but he's always got clients to get back to. It's the quickest, most enjoyable sex I've had in a long time. I tried to arrange a meetup for us in the past weekend, uh, this past weekend, and he said he can't see me outside of work hours because he's a family man first. How can he say this after all the kinky things he's done to me? I offered to get us a hotel room, and he said no. Why is he putting limits on our affair? Why is he putting limits on your affair? You you haven't figured it out yet? You're just the backseat girl, okay? He's not trying to have anything more than that with you. You were too easy the first day in the barbershop. You, you were doing too much then. Now you want to stretch out and get comfortable and what, make love? No, he just wants to do you in the backseat of his car and get back to his clients, okay? That's it. You you want to turn things up and have a full-blown affair or something with this guy, but that's not happening. You're just some married chick he's got on the side. Stop trying to make this more than what it is. It's not. He's not going to get too involved with you because he's a family man first. That's what he said. You don't mean anything to him. You're not important to him. Isn't this obvious? He's not going out of his way for you. He's not spending any money on you, any time really, other than the quickies, and he's not going to take you anywhere nice. Well, where's your husband anyway while all this is going on? I say to you, get your dignity back. Stop being the backseat girl. Leave this man alone. He's... He, He's going to end it anyway because you're, you're going to become a problem to him. You're catching feelings. You want more than he's willing to give. And, and, and that's not a good look for him, this married man who puts his family first. Steve? Mm. It amazes me how people send these letters in and they just start typing like it's, like it's natural. Uh-huh. <laughs> the subject is the backseat and the barbershop. Let me walk you through this unnatural natural that dear Stephen Shirley I'm a married woman in my late 40s okay I have a boyfriend that's five years younger than I am and he's also married you don't see how this letter is just and took so many damn turns yes and you know just be typing like okay this just what's happening you know I'm I'm in my late 40s. I got a boyfriend that's five years younger than me, and he married too. He's a co-owner of a barbershop, and that's where I met him. Uh, we've been seeing each other for a few weeks now, and he, he's got long work hours. He owns a barbershop. He's the co-owner. So we have to have sex whenever and wherever we can. Right there. Mm. What? Mm-hmm. <laughs> You have to have sex, but you don't, though. See, you created this, and now you're telling us something before you even told us how it jumped off, but I'm going to tell you why you having sex whenever and wherever you can. The first time we were intimate, it was magical. I had an appointment to get my lock shampooed, and I had no idea it would be done by a big, handsome man with magical fingers. We were the only two in the barber shop. He asked you to take off your turtleneck so it wouldn't get wet. Now, is he washing <laughs> your no... head or washing your neck? Right. They don't have no smocks. <laughs> what? <laughs> is we head washing or we neck washing? Right, right. <laughs> what we doing? So now, he asked you to take your turtleneck off so it wouldn't get wet. 
and you knew he was flirting because you ain't never been asked to take your shirt off, get your hair washed. I did it and leaned back. Well, what you want mm. now? Now, you done leaned back in the chair with your ample bosom spilling out of my black lace bra. Ooh. You just designed, you just, you just described a porno movie. <laughs> Wait, what? That's a porno Barber movie. Barbershop. <laughs> Barbershop is a porno movie. The pool hall is a porno movie. Uh, hair washing is a porno movie. They don't have really catch your ass titles or anything. <laughs> you got your big bosom spilling out of your black lace bra. And then when we come back, I'll tell you what happened. All right, hang on for part two of Steve's response coming up at 23 minutes after the hour. Today's Strawberry Letter subject, the back seat and the barbershop. We'll get back into it right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, come on, Steve. Let's recap today's Strawberry Letter, the subject, the back seat and the barbershop. Well, here this married lady in her late 40s got a boyfriend five years longer than her. He married, too. He's a co-owner of the barbershop. She went out there to get her lock shampooed, and she didn't have no idea it was being done by a big, handsome man. He's a co-owner of the shop. He get ready to do that, and then he tell her to take off her turtleneck so it don't get wet. She knew the dude was flirting. She took her turtleneck off anyway, leaned back in the shampoo bowl, shampoo, leaned back in the shampoo bowl, and her ample bosoms was sticking out of her black lace bra. She knew he was flirting, so I did it anyway. I didn't even tell him, look, we can do this without getting my turtleneck wet. Let me roll, let me tuck my turtleneck into my blouse. You didn't do that. You took it off and leaned back, let him have it. He told me he's all man and his breast was making it hard for him to work. He leaned against me while he shampooed my hair and I could feel it pressed up on my arm. See, all this is trouble. It was at eye level. So as he shampooed my hair, I did what I had to do. Okay, hold up. Oh, what? Because it was at eye level. You did what you had to do. Really. You know how much stuff I done had at eye level that I've had to avoid <laughs> in my life? <laughs> eye level. Like what, Steve? You know how many women I meet that's at eye level? <laughs> you better talk. That your ass got to ignore. Yes. If come you on. doing stuff just cause it's at eye level, your ass is in trouble. <laughs> yeah. Now the trick is to move it up to your eye level. <laughs> if you sitting down at the banquet, all I gotta do is walk by. Eye level. <laughs> Since then, I've been going by his shop a few days a week. When there are other customers inside the barbershop, we go out to the back seat of his car. We're either in the barbershop or on the back seat. I would love to stretch out and thoroughly enjoy myself, but he's always got clients to get back to. It's the quickest, most enjoyable sex I've had in a long time. I tried to arrange a meetup this past week, and he said he can't see me outside of work hours. What? No. Come on, what? What? Oh, wait. Where, where you going with this? Uh, exactly. I, I, I can't see you outside of here. <laughs> I'm a family man first. Mm-hmm. How can he say this after all the kinky things he's done to me? He done it to you doing work hours. <laughs> he done it to you in the barbershop chair, in the shampoo bowl, and in the back seat of the car. Mm. I offered to get us a hotel room, and he said no. Why is he putting limits on our affair? Because you are in a limited affair. Mm. How you start is how you finish. Hmm. What you demand is what you get. Hmm. Mm. 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 What you ask for is what we give. You asked Mm. for it at the shampoo bowl. (laughs) We gave it to you. (laughs) You Mm. come up there a few times a week. You ain't got to wash your locks a few times a week. I know that. You come up there a few times a week to get washed, not your locks. You come to get washed. And all the washing is going on in that back seat of that damn truck or in here when it ain't no customers. Quit coming up there three, four times a week. 
He don't want no room with you. No. You ain't room worthy. Mm, mm, mm. Why spend money on a room when all I want is in the back of that car? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Soon as these people get out of here, we're going to be at this face bowl. You the, fa- <laughs> you the face minute, bowl what? barbershop <laughs> backseat that chick. You don't get no, you in your late 40s. You knew better when you started this. Mm-hmm. Now, you he done told you, I'm a family man first. Yeah. You just came up in here. This just happened. Appreciate it, but that's all this is. I don't even like you like that. Mm. Mm-mm. 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 You just uh, at work. You this just man. This just this just popped up out of nowhere. You're not finna be nothing else, lady. Quit asking. Nope. Like Shirley said, you're not finna go to dinner. Y'all not finna take no long walks at the park. Y'all not finna be sitting on the <sighs> park bench talking things out. No. He don't care about what your dreams and visions <laughs> is. None of that. Wait a minute, huh? Man, I don't care nothing about you. What are you talking yeah. about? You think you know, what? Her. <laughs> he just know you kinky. You'll do anything. Cause mm-hmm. it's at eye level. Whoa. <laughs> eye level. Mm-hmm. Man, I'm glad that ain't my excuse. It's at eye level. You know how much trouble I be in? Mess with right. everything that's at eye level. Right, 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 right. right. Man, was, I'm on the Zoom right now with you, all my coworkers, all them at eye level. <laughs> <laughs> you don't see me sliding in their DMs and stuff. Come on, hey, uh-uh. you know, let me holler. No, we eye okay. level. Every boy, you lady, lady, go on somewhere. What you write us yeah. for? Yeah. Yes, you're a husband. We appreciate the letter, though, because it was entertaining. Yeah. Yes, it was, Steve. Thank you. Post your comments on today's Strawberry Letter at Steve Harvey FM on Instagram and Facebook. And check out the Strawberry Letter podcast on demand. Now, coming up at 46 minutes after the hour, we got Sports Talk with Junior right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Time now for Junior and Sports Talk. What you got, Junior? All right, Shirley. But I just want to let everybody know, April 1st, Comedy Fool, April Fool's Comedy Jam coming to the Texas Trust Theater. Get your tickets at Ticketmaster.com, Earthquake, Bruce Bruce, Bill Bellamy, Ryan Davis, and Shantae Wayans. Man, we doing this. Coming up, got about two weeks before the show coming up. So I'll be there. I'm ready. Uh, listen, uh, 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 you know, free agency started yesterday, and it has been crazy, man. Yeah. In man, football, you mean. Yeah, in football. Look, look uh, what's going on with the Dallas Cowboys? They they having some issues over here. Don't nobody want to play that. <laughs> no, no, but you told them. Randy Gregory, defensive end for the Cowboys, told the Cowboys on Tuesday, I'm going to take the five years, 70 million, 28 million guaranteed. I'm going to take that. I'm going to play for y'all. But then come yesterday, sign it with the Denver Broncos. <laughs> what? He just, he just, I lied. <laughs> I don't care wow. what I told y'all. <laughs> I lied. Man, they have been having the worst offseason because they traded Amari Cooper to the Cleveland Browns. Mm. Then they lost their other wide receiver, Cedric Wilson Jr., <laughs> to play with the Miami Dolphins. Now this didn't happen. They, when, when does your word mean anything in free agency? Yeah. I'm with the players. The owners don't keep their word. Mm. I'm all Did with the players. Mm. No, you got the Bronx. exact same no, deal. Exact same deal, but just tell others, you know what? I don't but now look, no I mean, Denver got a heck of a team. And now they got Russell. Yeah. So he looking at his chances. The oh. big, I think the biggest mistake the Cowboys made was they kept the entire same coaching staff, and something's wrong right there because they have the talent. The Cowboys yeah. got one of the most talented rosters in football. The yeah. problem is the coaching staff. And they didn't. They didn't make no changes. No, nah, got the same head coach. He ain't nothing. Let's talk about this, Unc, man. What is going on with Baker Mayfield? What, what's up? What you need? I'm finna tell you, Unc, listen, when the Browns met with Deshaun Watson yesterday. He started saying goodbye and thank he you He started right saying away. goodbye. Yup. <laughs> this is what they do with Clay. Yeah. It's so hard Mm-mm. Not boys to, to me. say goodbye. <laughs> Aww. Yeah, but I mean, you know, it was, it was nice what he did, but it's not it a guarantee because Deshaun gets to pick where he's going to go. Yeah, he does. 
But Vegas says since they're talking to Deshaun, well, you know, I just want to thank the city of Cleveland. It may be a chance that we end up with Deshaun, man. But yeah. you know, I ain't, but, I ain't putting no, I ain't putting no, 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 I ain't putting no, no nothing behind. No faith in is that because nah, it's just yeah, the way they work? No. The Browns work. Um, yeah, just it's just what we all, all that hope we didn't have. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all forever be a part of my life. <laughs> I, see, I just thought about it. Said, long man. post. Yeah, long wow, tweet. You know, we really appreciate everything. All the nice restaurants in Cleveland. We love them. <laughs> All right, Junior. Bye. Thank you. <laughs> thank you for Sports Talk today. Coming up at the top of the hour, the great resignation continues. We'll talk about quitting your job right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. The great resignation continues and nowhere seems to be safe. A mod pizza shop in Illinois was the subject of a TikTok where the user showed a sign at the door uh, saying, all staff has quit. We are closed for the night. So, what? Steve, pe- what? yeah, what? I mean, people are just quitting their jobs, Steve. And, and it really is an employee market right now. Lots of places are hiring. So why stay somewhere when you're unhappy? Should you have a rational plan before you just up and quit your job? What do you think? Well, I mean, I quit my last job I had. I quit the next day after I won 50 bucks at a comedy competition. So I'm the last person I asked, should you have a rational plan? Because okay. mine led directly yeah. to homelessness. Uh, yeah. I don't really recommend Looking anybody down. take the route I took. But if you want to, mm-hmm. I say go ahead. I mean, what did they quit, though? It's a pizza shop. How much did they pay? The dude over pepperoni quit, though? Yeah. <laughs> See, but once I pass by your house and I miss your address, I turn the corner and eat the pizza. Uh huh, uh huh, uh huh. But I heard it was a lot with with That's that. It was some sexual harassment stuff. It was a bunch at of a stuff. pizza shop. Yeah, <laughs> I'm not what fit to take all man? this for no day over no That's damn pizza. Saying. Yeah, yeah, pepperoni. Yeah, yeah. What are you talking about? No, I was yeah. talking about the pepperoni. You said you wanted. <laughs> you said pepperoni. Here I am. Yeah, no. Oh, no, no one's putting okay. up with that. No, ain't nobody. You wanted a meat lovers. That's what you said. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> No, no, immediately no. Yeah, but it's happening everywhere. I mean, that's one incident in Illinois, but it, it's happening. Have everywhere, y'all thought so. about quitting? Oh, here. No. We love our jobs. We love you. You're the best boss ever. Monica says she's considered quitting. (laughs) She's still here, though. A job or this job? Okay. This job. I thought he meant this job. Yeah. You're the best boss ever, Steve. The last Mm -hmm. job I had was at Monarch Paint Company. Paid $7.75 an hour. Walk right out of there. Really? Why? To pursue your you didn't dream, like the pay? Started, yeah, seven, no, because oh, no. I saw that the, the manager of the store had been there 22 years and the assistant manager had been there 20. What do I look like staying here? I started telling oh. jokes the next night. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. Well, well, Junior, experts say that if you do want to quit your job, you should talk to your boss. Uh-uh. Okay, don't, don't get emotional. Do don't get emotional. Go ahead and ask for your raise, ask to work from home, Uh -uh. talk about stress, and pinpoint your dissatisfaction at the job. Okay, Junior, let's try it right now. You go ahead and and pitch me for the raise. Go ahead. Let's try it. Uh, Mr. Harvey, I have a word with you, please. Absolutely, sir. You know, know, I've been here four years. I've been here four years. And, you know, everything I I ask me to do, I do all my my, my, my job description. I, I fit that. I oh, think I more, think. more than capable. Okay, and you know, another thing, too. I even work overtime for you when you ask me to. Yeah, I, I've never asked you that, but go ahead. But, you know, <laughs> I just wanted to say this. I really believe that I should be making $15 an hour. This seven fifty seven seventy five ain't working for me. I really am a $15 an hour employee. Oh, Please. I'll give you that right away. Oh, oh, so I'm getting the raise. Okay. You want okay. $15 an hour on this here show? For sure. <laughs> yeah, that's sixty dollars a day. I was yeah, talking about you? working at the paint company. Yeah, yeah, this, yeah cause you about to get a demotion. You about to get a demotion, Junior. Oh, no, 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 I'm talking to you about <laughs> this job right here. You want fifteen dollars an hour? That's sixty dollars a day. You got it. <laughs> okay, we need a do-over now that yeah. you know the facts. Yeah. No, yeah. Junior, yeah. Junior, Junior, you're asking for a raise on this job. Now go. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. Yeah. 
Hey, Unc, you know, um, I was thinking about this, Unc. I, I think I deserve uh, uh, about a $50,000 raise on this job here, man. Yeah. I really and, do. And, and you thought wrong. <laughs> You're thinking. Well, okay, well, that's over. I, I like the pay I'm getting anyway. Yeah. Please, easy. Thank Please. you for coming. Please interview me. And no, next, come on, coming up, coming up, we're going to interview Tommy for a reason. Okay. All right. Yeah. All right. Cool. All right. We'll be back with more How to Ask Your Boss for a Raise with the nephew and the uncle right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, so before we <laughs> before we left out, we were talking about the great resignation, how a lot of people around the country are quitting their jobs and uh, you know, they're unhappy with their with their employment, so they're looking for other jobs. And um experts say you should talk to your boss, don't get emotional, ask for a raise, ask to work from home, talk about stress and pinpoint just what you're dissatisfied about at your job. So the nephew wanted to ask you, Steve. Some questions. He wanted to talk to you about yes, it. Yes, sir. Go ahead. You got one damn minute we can sit down and have a conversation? Absolutely. Mm. That's how you ask for wow. it. No, no, it's fine. It's fine. Don't get emotional. Yeah. That's the first thing. Trying not to get it. emotional. I've been on this radio 20 <laughs> years with you. Uh, <laughs> I'm just going to go and say it. I'm just going to go and say it. I think I deserve another uh, extra $250,000. So, how the hell are we going to do this? Yeah. Well, you won't see year 21 in this mother. <laughs> That's for damn sure. Don't get emotional. Talk to your boss. I'm talking to him. No, I'm talking pinpoint, back. Pinpoint your dissatisfaction. We done about pinpointed the job. it. I've been stupid on here for 20 damn years doing the best, the best stupidity in the world. The least you can do is give me an extra 250 on this damn show. Hell. I can do far less than that. <laughs> what? If you looking for least, I can do way least than that. <laughs> this is not working. Uh, Where's uh, coming HR? Up at, I know. Coming up in 33 minutes after the hour, we'll do a round of Would You Rather right after this. You're fired, Tommy. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Time now, guys, for Would You Rather. Would you rather detect every lie you hear, or would you rather get away with every lie you tell? Oh, oh B. 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 You want to get away with every lie you tell. You're probably that, doing that already. That's my whole goal in life is B. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm at least six. Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't need to detect no lie. I'll assume that's what you're doing when you're talking to me. So. Could you be lying? Yeah, I'll assume we're lying. Think, I think we both lying. Yeah. Uh, so everybody's just that. lying, yeah. huh? Yeah. Wow. Such a different world in which we live. All right. Would you rather be asked the same question over and over, or would you rather never be spoken to ever again? Oh, what? Uh, you, what, what, what are you talking about, Sure. Just, just let's just say one person for yeah. for sake of this. Would you rather, or B. would you rather never ever be spoken to again? Yeah, yeah, I'm going with B. Yeah. Yeah, I can't keep him. I can't be him. Yeah, I can't well, be him. Well, if that no, nah, hold on now. Wait a minute. Come on, come on, come on now. So who well, is she? That one question is is less. Can we do it? I mean, if I just hear that <laughs> over and over again, then you know, I'm I'm good with when that. When are we gonna do it? Let's do it. Can we do it? All that, all the time, over and over, over and over again. <laughs> but if the question, Tommy, is who what about phone while you're doing this? it? Yeah. The question, who phone number is this? I'm here to be. Yeah. I'm here to be. But you can't hear right. the question ahead of time. No. Yeah, you don't know what it's going to be. All right, would you rather it be Christmas every day, Christmas every day, or Ooh. your birthday every day? Okay, uh, my birthday. Yeah, Christmas too much company. Yeah, it's too many yeah. people. Yeah. Okay. No. Chris, Christmas, I got to buy too much stuff. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. <laughs> Hell no. Let it be my birthday. Hell <laughs> Last year, I couldn't older. put that bike together right. Mm-mm, I, that's too much. No. <laughs> so Christmas is cool just being one day a year, but you want one your birthday day every day. Every day. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, one, yeah. Me. I don't get nothing on either day, so it don't matter. It don't matter. <laughs> what? Yeah, it be my birthday or Christmas. I ain't getting nothing, no way. All right. All right. This is kind of crazy. Would you rather win the lottery but have to spend it all in one day or 
Would you like to trip? Would you rather triple your current salary forever? Oh wait, say that again, sure. That's easy. That's easy. Say that right again. There. Would you rather win the lottery, win the lottery, but have to spend it all in one day, or triple your current salary forever? That's easy. Oh no. Which one you want, sure? Triple my current salary I'm forever. I'm, I'm yeah, forever. <laughs> I triple my salary. I'm good. I mean, I'm, I, I triple yeah. my salary. I'm in the lotto hell. <laughs> you have won the lottery. Huh? Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That's our, our today's version of Would You Rather. Coming up, last break of the day. And, of course, some closing remarks from the one and only, our fearless leader, Steve Harvey, right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, guys, here we are, our last break of the day on this Thursday. Headed into Friday. Yeah. Friday. Yeah, it's been a good day. We've had fun today. Oh, <laughs> Boy, you and Tommy really got into it earlier about those the raise and the job yeah, and all of that. Well, you come up in my office cussing at me, and you think you can yeah. get up out of here? The first thing it said was, don't be emotional. Once you Hothead, once Tommy. you bring emotion into it, mm-hmm. I yeah. have it for you. I, I'm <laughs> I'm really undeveloped in my Christianity. If you come to me hard, I just don't know how to, you know, be mm-hmm. soft with you. Be a Christian. And that was Tommy that. asking for a raise. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Going on. Uh-huh. They're gonna cuss me. What? <laughs> I mean, the big one, too. Woo. I've, been, I've been up in this blankety blank 20 years. Well, I'll tell you. Yeah. Man, you ain't going to be up in this stupid. blankety blank 21. <laughs> That's how we going to work yeah, this Yeah, he said, out. I've been being up in here stupid for 20 years. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Steve. Take us out. Hey, my closing remarks are there. I want you all to be aware of something that I've found to be a little bit troubling sometimes. It's the word Karma. The word karma. I've been watching people and they toss this word around so loosely. And I want you all to be careful. Be careful of people who always use the word karma. Because they throw it around like 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 they have the right to. You know, it is 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 there a karma committee? And who's on it? Who determines what's happening to you as karma? Don't throw that word around so easily because if you look up the definition of karma and you Google it, it'll throw you off a little bit because it really has a lot to do with religion and, 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 and certain religions in this world. That's where the word karma came from. So when people always talk about, yeah, that's karma, what's happening to you is karma, that's not all the way. It's not always the case. Be careful of people who use that word a lot because I have to warn you, who determines what karma is and how long does karma last? Have you ever noticed people throw that word around to keep you in a certain place, to keep you in a certain category, to keep you feeling a certain kind of way? Even after you've moved on long from it, real negative people have a have a tendency to throw this word karma around i want y'all to be aware of this man because it's dangerous to let people do it see god has this thing called grace and mercy and god passes it out to whoever asks for it if you ask god for forgiveness for something and god gives you his grace and he forgives you that allows you to be forgiven god never brings it back up again and you're free to move on so you got to be careful of people who talking about every time something happens to you, they relate it to something that you did before and they call it karma. That's not what it is, y'all. Listen to me. The vast majority of things that happen to you, it ain't karma. It's just life. What, what are you talking about? You lose a loved one. That ain't karma. You you don't you you don't you, something happens to you negatively. That's not karma. That's life. It's called trials. It's called test. It's a challenge. It's a setup for a comeback. 
It's a lot of things, but it don't have to be karma, man. You know, li- listen to me. If you if you murder someone and you get sent to prison, that's justice. Th- that's what that. That's justice. You can call it calm if you want to, but it's court system. It's, it's just justice. I notice a lot of people use karma to keep you from 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 feeling forgiven. I know on a personal note that I've done something way back when I was a young man. And do you know that there are still people in my life when something negative happens to me? They refer back to that moment as karma. I don't let them do it to me. God has been forgiving me for the things I've done as a young man. He been forgave you a long time ago for the things you've done as a young man. You've had so many blessings that occurred in your life since you made that mistake as a young man, as a young girl, as a young woman. Do you know how many blessings you've had since you've made those mistakes? Then when something else called life pops up your way, here comes somebody wanting to relate it back to the time you had your baby, the time you left this man, you walked out of this situation, and they want to call that karma. Uh, Don't let them do that. Listen to me, y'all. God is in the forgiving business. When he forgives you, don't let people keep you from being free of it by reminding you of a word that they throw around way too loosely called karma. Every time something happens, you see on the internet, calm as a bee, calm as this, calm as that. Calm. Who, is, who are these people? Who is the karma committee? I don't go for that. I have no karma committee that I answer to. I answer to my Heavenly Father, and I suggest that you do too. So from now on, when you ask God for forgiveness, and God forgives you, move on. And don't let nobody on the karma committee hold you to your former past and your former mistakes because God has allowed you to move on, and you should. Thank you very much. Those are my closing remarks. Hope you got something from it. Hey, y'all, listen. God willing, we'll see you all uh, tomorrow. Tomorrow. In the meantime, talk to God. He'd love to hear from you. For all Steve Harvey contests, no purchase necessary, void where prohibited. Participants must be legal U.S. residents at least 18 years old unless otherwise stated. For complete contest rules, visit steveharveyfm.com. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. 